what I want to talk about today, a Mind Valley event would not be complete if we did not bring in other dimensions of human development, right? It's not just about finance. Your wealth is also going to be dependent on your body's energy, on your ability to focus, on your thinking ability or cognitive skills. You see, while so many of us are here for money, there's something that is really important for us to understand. Every billionaire I've had the benefit of interviewing, and I've interviewed over a thousand people, every single one of them would give up 99% of their money for their health. I came across this article recently about the founder of Lululemon. Amazing guy, founded an incredible clothing brand that has made millions of people all around the world have really great asses. Yet the founder of Lululemon was recently diagnosed with a rare disease. Approximately 10,000 people in the world suffer from this disease, and it means that in five years, he might not be able to walk and he might be wheelchair-bound. He is spending $100 million to help find a cure for this disease. And I bet you, if he could give away 99% of his wealth for that, he's worth about $7 billion, he would do so. You see, health, in terms of everyone that I've had, that I've spoken to or interviewed, they always place their health first. But the funny thing is this, in our pursuit of money, we actually frequently damage our health. How many wealthy people do you know who will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a great house or a great car? I find this really interesting. I know people who buy Lamborghinis and Ferraris spending ridiculous amounts of money, but they will not spend 1% of that to make their body actually function better. They care about the roar of the engine of a Lamborghini or of a Maserati, but they won't spend 1% of that to ensure that their body that actually takes you places is not optimized. We need to change that paradigm. So a new mindset that's emerging among wealthy people is health comes first. Health leads to wealth. But what I want to show you in this presentation is how correlated it is, but also how easy it is to make tiny, subtle changes in your day-to-day -day habits that will improve your health in remarkable ways. So first, I want to share a story, okay? I mentioned many of the most incredible billionaires I know put their health first. So in 2019, I attended a mastermind on Necker Island. And uh, Necker Island is owned by Richard Branson, and he uses this beautiful island of his to host entrepreneurial masterminds. So I was there on this beautiful mastermind, and at 9 p.m., Branson was sitting at a dinner table with all of the other entrepreneurs, and he says, I'm going to go for a swim tomorrow at 6 a.m. Does anybody want to join me? And so seven or eight people said, sure, yeah, we'll wake up at 6 a.m. and swim. At 6 a.m., we go down to the beach, and Branson's there, and he has his flippers, and he says, okay, we're going to swim five kilometers across open water from Necker Island to Mosquito Island, and then we'll have breakfast. And we were thinking, are you kidding me? And he goes, all right, guys, let's start doing this. Now, do you guys know how difficult it is to swim five kilometers across open water? And by the way, I had not been in a pool in maybe two or three years, right? So I grew up in Malaysia. There's like water and ocean everywhere. I'm just, I'm just not into it. White people, you love pools. But in the condo I live in, even though there's an amazing pool, I don't go in. I don't need a tan, and I don't like getting wet. So this was a big deal for me. So I backed out a moment. I said, guys, you, I don't know if I can swim five kilometers. I haven't swum in two years. I'll be the photographer. I'll sit on the safety boat, follow all of the swimmers, and I'll take photographs. And then something happened that blew my mind. So Branson gets into the water, and this guy is in his 70s. He gets into the water, and um, he's about to swim, and he goes, oh, shh, damn, I forgot my goggles. And then his assistant says, should I run up and get your goggles? And he goes, nah, it's okay, I'll just backstroke. So this man is now going to backstroke five kilometers. That's about one hour. Everyone else jumped in the water with him. I found this so inspiring, I decided, okay, fine, I'm going to do this. So me, not a good swimmer, jumped in. Now, fortunately, there's a safety boat, so if any of us get our foot bitten off by a shark or we drown, we get pulled out, right? So it's not as dangerous as it might appear. I made it about two and a half kilometers before my body was so tired, I had to go in a safety boat, but I had never swum two and a half kilometers. Two and a half kilometers is more than I'd swum in the last two decades. Branson made it all the way back. 
but this is what made it all the way there, but this is what I found interesting. He swims from Necker to Mosquito Island, five kilometers, we have this amazing breakfast, and then he says, he has a way of pushing people, he's like, by the way, no one has ever done it both ways. If any of you are willing to get back in that water and swim all the way back, you would have done 10 kilometers and you would have broken a record. And that girl in that picture, her name is Stephanie, she did it. She swam all the way back, becoming the first, she, like, she beat all of the men, becoming the first person, the first human being to do that swim. Very inspiring. But what I found curious about this was, was the idea of how important health is to Branson. His health is what fuels him to be able to do all of his crazy adventures at his age. But I see this with a lot of people. So on Mosquito Island, Branson shares a house with 10 other billionaires, right? One of them is Naveen Jain, who's a Mind Valley author and a friend of mine. I was visiting Naveen recently and staying at his home. And every morning before breakfast, Naveen would insist we hike up and down the island for about 45 minutes every single day. And he's there with his wife, and it was just wonderful to see. Again, placing his health first. We were doing 10,000 steps a day before breakfast sometimes. Every wealthy individual I know who has their life together would not ignore their health. And I don't want you guys making that mistake because I made this mistake. Now, why is health important? If you can put the protocols that I'm about to teach you in practice, this is what you're going to see. First, improving brain cognition. Your thinking is actually going to get finer and more focused. How many of you here have difficulty with focus? Many people find that after these protocols, their focus is sharp, and many people who label themselves as having ADHD find that that label no longer applies. A lot of it is biochemistry, and it's the practices that you put in place. It's almost as if you've raised your IQ 10 points. Your intelligence goes up when your health goes up. We'll talk about that in a moment. Number one, higher distress tolerance. What this means is, in the face of complexity, you can thrive because your physiology can tolerate more complexity without breaking down into stress. Third, higher energy levels. So the mitochondria in your cells are producing more energy, so you can go further longer, and you can thus get more output done in a given amount of time. Next, smoother emotional states. You are less bitchy and less whiny because you, your emotions are in the state of joy, love, and bliss for a longer period of time, even when things get stressful. Number five, metabolic efficiency. Your body is burning fat faster. And metabolic efficiency also means that you aren't gaining weight. In fact, you're probably losing weight. And finally, better sleep. We'll talk about the importance of sleep, and I'll show you some stunning data on what happens if you bypass even one hour of sleep in a given day. Now, the protocol I'm about to teach you will take 90 minutes a day. It's broken up over the day. It takes 90 minutes. I do this every day, so I'm teaching you my protocol. But here's the funny thing. Although you are adding 90 minutes of additional complexity to your day, you are actually gaining 90 minutes back in terms of better focus, better efficiency. So if you have to sacrifice, if you work eight hours and you have to take an hour of work aside to do this protocol, and some of you might, you will still get eight hours of work done. Okay, now you may be thinking, well, what's the point? I'm spending an hour to get an hour. Big deal, right? It is, because you're also going to add 10 years of your life. I'm talking about adding 10 years of healthy lifespan to your life, and we look at this data as well. So this means if the average person dies at 75, you will live to be 85, and you will live into your 85s in a much healthier body. So you're actually buying more time, and this is so valuable. This is what it looks like, okay? So most people, so right now in America, the average man will die three years sooner than the average woman. So American lifespans are decreasing. And we don't really know why, but it is something to be concerned about. What happens is when you put these protocols in place, you actually see while your lifespan might increase five years or so, notice the gray area your health span is increasing. So you may add five areas to your life, but what happens is that the last 15 years of your life are so much more richer, are so much more productive. If you look at this chart, you'll see that when you're 80, 
you're having the same quality of life as someone in their 40s, and this is doable. Are you guys interested in this approach? Okay, now, what I'm going to put, toge put together for you is a, a complete approach that I designed for myself based on all of these Mind Valley programs. So if you have a Mind Valley membership, you have access to these programs. But you know, these programs would take hours to go through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I took the nuggets from these programs, from interviewing the authors of these programs, and put everything together on a daily approach for myself. Now, let's start with the morning routine. I'm going to go super fast. I'm going to share with you everything I do, but I'm going to give you a QR code at the end so you can download the entire slide deck, OK? And I'm also going to give you access to an AI I just put together this morning that will help you plan this routine for yourself, at least a portion of this routine. So we're going to make this super easy for you to implement. Let's start with the morning routine. 7.30 AM, I practice meditation. Can you guess what meditation I practice? The sixth phase, I designed it for myself. You can uh, pick up the book, or you can get it free on YouTube. I put it up on YouTube, just go to YouTube, type in Six Face, or download the Mind Valley app, and the Six Face Quest is actually free. So in America, it's called, the book is called The Six Face Meditation. In Britain, for some reason, it's called Zero Bullshit Meditation. The book is, by the way, really, really, really funny. I didn't want to write a, a, a boring meditation book, so it's got a lot of cheeky humor in it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Now, why is the Six Face important? Let me show you some press on how top performers are using it. Miguel said in Billboard magazine that when he gets on stage in front of his concerts for hundreds of thousands of fans, he has his entire team do the six-phase meditation. If you're American, you will recognize this guy, Tony Gonzalez, one of the top 100 footballers in America. By football, for those of you in Britain, I mean rugby. He does the six-phase. This was really interesting. Bianca Andrescu was practicing the six-phase from the time she was 16. In the visualization portion, she saw herself winning the US Open. At 19 years of age, she beat Serena Williams, won the US Open. When they asked her, how did you do it? She credited my book, The Code of the Extraordinary Mind, and The Sixth Face. All of these performers are using it. But notice something about these people. They are all rock stars going on stage for concert or athletes. Why? Because rock stars and athletes are super conscious of how they perform. When you get in a court, you are playing against points. You are beating an older version of yourself. When you get on stage, you are playing for a crowd. You instantly get feedback. And what these people are saying is that the 17 to 18 minutes they do the six phase, they instantly get that feedback and their scores improve. Now, for many entrepreneurs, we don't, we can't look, we don't see immediate scores. We see long-term scores. But if you're really paying attention, like these athletes and rock stars, you will see your immediate performance improve. So, I want to give you a, to really convince you to look into this, I want to play a video from my friend Charlie Morley, who's one of our British Mind Valley authors. He looked at the book The Sixth Face and he sent me this video. Please make sure sound is on. And this will help you understand the importance of the sixth face in British speak. Sound, please, guys. Let me know. Thumbs up, okay, when it's ready? All good? Vision. Yeah, um, you know I've done the six phase before, but I just had a you know properly good look at in, into it now and a practice of it. And yeah, it's it's the dog's bollocks, man. You've done a bloody good job with that. You have yeah found a way to kind of ditch the fuckery and all the spiritual bullshit that is unneeded, and leave us with the spiritual essence that is needed. Um, you know, all the wanky stuff is gone, and yeah, it's a bloody good setup. It's a bloody good sequence. It's. Um, yeah, it's good, man, as I say. You've got the dog's bollocks there, so well done. Loving it. Let me, let me type that out for those of you who don't speak British English, right? He said, it's the dog's bollocks. Bloody good job. You found a way to ditch the fuckery and all the spiritual bullshit that is unneeded. All the wanky stuff is gone. So, Brits, you understand how powerful this is, right? It is the dog's bollocks, whatever that means. <laughs> and it's a bloody good sequence, apparently, too. Okay, dog's bollocks. I love that. Now I understand why my British editor wanted to call my book Zero Bullshit Meditation. You Brits, you guys have the foulest minds. You're so polite and well-dressed on the outside, but it's like under your well-dressed suits, you're not wearing any underwear. <laughs> it's amazing. I love this about you. You are, you, you're, you're not like Americans. Americans, you totally know who they are. Brits, you're sneaky. You hide this dirtiness. Okay, six-phase meditation. Get it free. It's on the Mind Valley app. Now, I alternate. So, sometimes I do the sixth phase, but there's another set of meditations that 
I love, and this is from our friend Paul McKenna, whom you experienced yesterday. Again, we've made it free on the Mind Valley app. Tell your friends. This is the most powerful meditation I've ever experienced. It's called Hypnotic Trance Bliss. Paul uses hypnotherapy to rewire your brain's tolerance for stress so that when you're in stressful situations, you function differently. Now, this meditation is so powerful, it is not to be underestimated. If you listen to this meditation for seven days in a row, you will see a long-term difference in how your brain functions. You will find, so you listen to it for one week. By week two, you will find that you are dealing with work differently. Now, the results are so fast, so powerful, that we couldn't really, people wouldn't believe it. So we created a course around this called Everyday Bliss. And the course takes you through five hours of lectures on stress and understanding stress and all of that stuff. But when I spoke to Paul, he's like, all of that stuff is unnecessary. It's just that people don't believe this is so powerful, so I have to put all of this unnecessary stuff out there so they're convinced, because they feel they have to work super hard to learn how to manage stress. Skip the course Everyday Bliss. Just listen to this for seven days in a row, and you will see a powerful difference. Now, after you're done listening to this for seven days in a row, and by the way, the difference will last about, will last in perpetuity until you have a traumatic situation. Let's say something goes wrong and your stress levels go up again, and, you're now at a, and you now have to deal with that. You might want to then repeat it a year out. But in addition to this, there's another meditation. Again, we've made this free. It's hypnotic trance for instant confidence. Really powerful stuff. You're going out. Uh, to give a speech, you have to do a boardroom presentation. You're doubting yourself. Hypnotic trance for confidence will change you. Again, listen to it seven days in a row. Again, my wonderful team at Mind Valley and Paul McKenna, we have made this completely free, okay? Completely free for everyone in the world to benefit from. If you have friends who need this, ask them to go to mindvalley.com forward slash hypnotherapy and they can download it for free, okay? Uh, just Listen to it in the Mind Valley app. So I start my day with the meditations. These take about 20 to 22 minutes. I then go and do a cold shower. Now, cold showers are something you're going to hate for day one, two, three. But it's something that is so essential. And so many amazing people I know are addicted to cold showers. So cold showers do this. They cause your body to burn fat, brown fat, which is stored over here, which is the hardest fat to burn they cause you to have a massive dopamine hit. So for the rest of the day, you're just in the most incredible moods. And they also cause you to increase your immunity. Once you get addicted to cold showers, the mood shift that you get is so addictive, you'll want to start doing it again. But it gets tricky. The first time you turn on your shower without the heat on, you're going to want to strangle me for putting you in that situation. But if you can tolerate 30 seconds, on day two, you'll go up to 40 seconds. And then day five, 50 seconds. Day six, 60 seconds. You want to get all the way to three minutes. Three minutes cold shower a day is proven to have some of the most incredible health benefits you can imagine. Google it or ask ChatGPT, okay? But it is one of the most powerful practices, so I started doing this daily. Now, at 8.30 a.m., so now an hour has elapsed, I've woken up, I've maybe um, done my meditation, I've showered. Now I'm sitting down, I'm about to start work, but I do not eat anything. I go into intermittent fasting. If any of you want to study fasting, we have the program Beyond Fasting on Mind Valley. But fasting is really easy, and it is one of the most important practices for metabolic efficiency and for improving your cognition and keeping weight off. So intermittent fasting works like this. And keep in mind, it's different for men and women. For men, you can go all the way up to 20 to 22 hours of fasting. It's easy. I do that sometimes, right? If you are working out and trying to put on muscle, you do not want to go above 16 hours. So you want to fast for about 16 hours. For women, it's a lower ratio, 12 to 14 hours. Because a woman's hormones are different, long-term fasting has proven to be um, more dangerous for a woman than it is for a man, right? It's not dangerous, but it can be disruptive to your hormonal cycle. So Google fasting for men, fasting for women, look into the program intermittent fasting, but this in a nutshell is how you do it. So I choose to have an eight hour eating window. So I eat, I skip breakfast, I eat at 1 p.m., 4 p.m., and 8 p.m. Those are my three meals. 1 p.m., I have four eggs because I want a big dose of protein. 4 p.m., I have a protein, a protein shake roughly 50 grams of protein. And then at 8 p.m. I have dinner. And for dinner I eat 
anything I want. I avoid too much potatoes, but I do eat rice. I do eat pasta sometimes, but mostly my plate is 50% protein, right? And the reason I do that is because to me, muscle, muscle gain is important. So I eat a lot of protein. But it turns out that this eight hour eating window is how our ancestors functioned. It means that for 16 hours, your body is in a fasting state and it causes your body to go through something called autophagy, where all the dead cells, all of the stuff in your body that's not needed is cast aside. Your body literally starts eating away the unnecessary cells. You actually end up living longer, you have greater metabolic efficiency, and you stop feeling hungry. So fasting is a really powerful practice. Now, to help you fast, there's a simple trick that keeps away the hunger. And by the way, you may feel hungry only for the first few days, then the hunger typically is tamed. You start your morning with water, with Himalayan salt and lemon, and then coffee. That's it. Coffee and water with Himalayan salt and lemon. So this is how I start my day. From the time I wake up at 7.30 all the way to 1 or 1.30 p.m., all I'm taking is water with Himalayan salt and lemon and coffee. And you want to drink a lot of water. Water is amazing. If you're dehydrated, your metabolic rate goes down by as much as 4%. So you want to make sure you're drinking a lot of water. Now, when you fast, it is one of the most effective way to cause fat loss. A study by Dr. Daniel Amen in 2020 showed, surprisingly, that the more fat you carry, the lower your brain's ability to compute. So this is really interesting. When you lose fat, you actually become smarter. Read this. Excess fat on the body further impairs brain function. An analysis of brain spec scans of 20,000 psychiatric patients at Amen Clinics found that as their weight went up, the physical functioning of their brain went down. If you're an entrepreneur, it is vital that you start eating healthy to reduce fat because you're actually going to become a better entrepreneur. You'll be able to get more work done in less time. Your thinking is going to be better. Your decision making is going to be better. You're going to feel better about yourself and your lifespan will increase, which means more time to build your business and create intergenerational wealth for your family. Do you see how important this is? But what you need to understand is that 85% of your weight is what you eat. It's not exercise. Exercise has other benefits. It is 85% what you eat. This is what modern science says. Food companies lie to you. So they'll say, you know, drink a Diet Coke and then go walk 10,000 steps and you're good. No, Diet Coke is horrible for you. It is worse for you than drinking regular Coke because the chemicals that they put in Diet Coke disrupt your gut bacteria. Studies show that people who drink Diet Coke actually sometimes put on more fat than people who drink regular Coke. But actually, don't drink Coke at all. Use Coke as toilet cleaner. That's really all it's good for, toilet cleaner. Instead, practice intermittent fasting. Get used to, if you need something soda-y, use sparkling water. I love sparkling water. But remember, every extra pound of fat you carry is literally weighing you down. It's also going to make you less effective in terms of cognitive ability. Now, 8.30 a.m. is focus time. I used to have focus issues. This is what I found actually fixed my focus issues. So it's about creating flow. And there are a couple of principles for getting into that flow state where you can just get so much done in so little time. The first is remember this. We're all human beings. We can't focus for extended periods of time. The ideal, science says, the ideal focus window is 90 minutes. So let's say you need to write a book or you need to code a project or you need to write a speech. Set a timer for 90 minutes. Have your coffee, have your Himalayan uh, salt water and go 90 minutes, then give yourself a break. You're only human. But in 90 minutes, you can get so much done. Now, consecutively, we can work efficiently for about five hours before we need to rest. So I might work 90 minutes, give myself a break, but after five hours, I will probably take a nap or break for lunch. Okay, so remember the 90 minute rule. In terms of coffee, we're creating a culture where coffee is everywhere. Do you know coffee is the second most shipped commodity in the world? Petroleum is number one, that fuels our machinery. Coffee, apparently, is supposed to fuel us, that's number two. That is how dependent we are as a species on coffee. But even Dave Asprey, the biohacker and the founder of Bulletproof Coffee, says this, don't go more than two cups a day. Caffeine is a drug. And here's what happens when you overdrink coffee. 
Number one, coffee ages your skin. So all of that makeup and stuff and creams that you put on your face to make you look younger, your third or fourth cup of coffee is taking away that advantage. The second thing is, coffee gets you addicted. And coffee actually creates, according to science, fake meaning. I was listening to a neuroscientist called Jack Aloka talk about this. He said, have you seen all of those Instagram posts of like sexy looking morning people in the balcony holding a cup of coffee in a balcony in maybe Turin, Italy going, ah, life is so wonderful. No, it isn't. That's an ugly balcony. And there's no big deal about that photo. Coffee makes you see meaning where there's no meaning. It's weird, but coffee makes a precious moment feel more meaningful. It's literally seducing your brain. And so this is why we have this emotional attachment to coffee. Coffee is like, it's like a mind virus. So you want to limit yourself to two cups of caffeine. And then if you need to continue drinking, go decaf. Now how I do it is I mix two scoops of decaf with one scoop of coffee in my coffee machine. So I take um, four cups a day, but those four cups are approximately only 33% caffeinated. So decaf coffee is, is perfectly acceptable. Next, the real Limitless pill. And if you've seen the movie Limitless, okay, you can create a pretty damn amazing Limitless effect in terms of focus and efficiency. I take these pills every single day. Now this is from Sean Wells, who's the supplement scientist at Mind Valley. Perizanthine, alpha GPC, tyrosine plus L-theanine. Let's break it down. Perizantine is the caffeine molecule with the 20% of caffeine that causes jitters sliced away through the brilliance of science. It's caffeine that you can take that gives you the focused attention of caffeine without the jitters and it doesn't mess your sleep. Does it affect skin aging? I don't know yet, but it's a powerful thing. Number two, alpha GPC, wonder drug. Alpha GPC amplifies focus. Third, tyrosine. And the fourth, if you want to go, so all the first three give you focus and f uh, give you focus. If you want to bring in creativity, so creativity is a type of focus where you also have beautiful ideas coming. What you got to do is generate alpha waves, and that's what L-theanine does. L-theanine helps you relax. It is equivalent to 20 cups of green tea. When you combine the four of these together, you have a focus stack that is unbeatable. Now, all of these you can buy on Amazon. They are not expensive at all. The next thing is the rule of 4%. You want to create flow? You must thread the line between challenge and ease. So Stephen Kotler, who ran the Flow Genome Project, said he found this in his research. If you're giving yourself amount, a certain amount of work to do, increase that difficulty of the work by 4%. That means, let's say you're a writer, and you have to write 12 pages in 90 minutes. After you're doing that for about a week, the very next week, challenge yourself to write maybe 13 pages or 12.5 pages, just 4% extra. And what you find is that challenge helps create flow. So there's something about our minds, but if something gets too easy, we lose flow. If it's too difficult, we also lose flow. But 4% difficult, 4% harder than what we are used to, puts us at the exact zone for flow. So apply the 4% rule. All right, now it's 12.30. I finish my morning, I'm hyperproductive. Now it's time for supplements. Now here's the bad news, guys. Even if you eat healthy, the food today is lacking the nutritional density that it did even 30 years ago. The US Senate issued a warning that said, the quality of nutrition in our food is at an alarmingly low level, and this is a cause for national concern. Now that warning, was issued in 1932. Imagine where we are today. According to Naveen Jain, the founder of Viome, the gut microbiome testing company, an avocado in the 1980s had eight times more nutritional density than an avocado today. So we are, as a species, basically ruining our soil, and our food quality is getting worse and worse. This is one of the reasons why we observe things such as obesity is going up, um, Diabetes is going up, and among men, there's a, something really bad happening. Testosterone in men has fallen 50% since the 1980s. Basically, your grandfathers had higher testosterone than men today and were more manly. Now, 
This week, they, a science a study came out tracing why testosterone is going down. Again, it had to do with our food supply. It was with uh, artificial, um, artificial stuff put in our food, for example, incest insecticides and pesticides. And so, unfortunately, even if you're trying to eat healthy, you're going to hit this wall. And this is why supplementation is important. The American diet, the standard American diet, which no coincidentally, the abbreviation is SAD, is no longer enough. But the funny thing is, the standard American diet is spreading globally. So even if you're not American, congratulations, thanks to American marketing, you are rapidly moving towards a standard American diet. This is why you need to have a supplement stack. Now, supplement stacks mean you're getting um, important supplements, magnesium, uh, vitamin C, depending on your needs, true the right supplements, the right pills. I travel everywhere with a supplement stack. You can see I have there qualia for night. I have berberin. Berberin causes um, your body to burn more, more fat. Zenmote by Bulletproof. Zenmote helps you relax. I have a blood sugar optimizer supplement because um, I can't resist a good dessert. And then I have other supplements that I take. Now, identifying the right supplement can be difficult. So I had my supplement scientist, Sean Wells, who's one of the best in the world, put together a list of 64 supplements for you, and then we connected that list to ChatGPT, and officially today we are announcing Supplement GPT by Mindvalley. You can check it out if you have a ChatGPT account. This can be your custom bot to design your supplement stack. For example, this is what I asked Supplement GPT today. I'm speaking this week in London. I need to take the stage with high energy and good emotions. I want a better sense of humor and to have high distress tolerance. Need adaptability, also need to sleep well to be fully refreshed. Okay, and this is what Supplement GPT provided me. Vitamin B complex, L-theanine, 5-HTP, magnesium bisglycinate, omega-3 fatty acids. That's pretty cool. Now, the mistake people make is that they take the same supplements every week. No, every week your conditions are going to be different. You might have super busy weeks. You might have a week where you're on vacation. You might have a week where you're feeling kind of sad. Feed that into ChatGPT and get your supplements for that week. Okay, so all you got to do to access ChatGPT is to Follow the QR code I gave you. Again, it's completely free. Now, I also asked ChatGPT to create a beautiful grand slide to announce itself as Supplement GPT, and this is what it created. It is so full of itself. <laughs> that's how you access Supplement GPT. Take a picture of that. And by the way, if it doesn't work, that's because ChatGPT is going through some disruption today. I'm sure if you heard the news, the CEO got fired, the co-founder resigned, so um, we don't know what's happening. But hopefully, it works. And uh, you, you do need, I think for this to work, you do need a ChatGPT account. How many of you here are using ChatGPT and have an account? Great, most of you. So it shouldn't be a problem, okay? Now, don't give it, don't give it a simple message such as, I need more energy. It'll give you 20 supplements for energy. Be specific. Say, hey, I need more energy because I'm feeling a little bit down right now, not been sleeping right. I think I drank too many bottles of wine. I'm at this crazy conference like organized by Italians, and I'm having a hard time understanding them because of their accents. And all of a sudden, I feel that I really need to buy seven pieces of property. And then see what it g gives you. <laughs> all right, afternoon routine. Now, what I shared is just my morning. How much time do you think that takes? Well, actually, not much time at all. I mean, I, I meditated for about 20 minutes, but I skipped breakfast, so I got that 20 minutes back. So there's really been no additional time, but because of my focus states, because of, L, of tyrosine and alpha GPC, I actually can do in the morning what most people do in about eight to 12 hours. Okay, next, the afternoon routine. Now, I start breakfast at 1.30, because that's what you do if you're doing intermittent fasting. I eat a high-protein diet. You don't have to be a meat eater to eat a high-protein diet. You can be a vegetarian, and you can still have a high-protein diet. But to me, one of the most important things is that after you turn 30, your body loses 1% of muscle every year. It's called sarcopenia. And so the most important exercise you can do is weight training to build back muscle. But if you're doing weight training, you've got to take enough protein. So I take four eggs and then I take some veggies, some broccoli or something on the side. So I, I eat a lot of protein to, to maintain and build muscle. Musculature is the one thing about your body that has the highest correlation with longevity. Let me repeat that. The number one thing about your body that correlates with longevity is your muscle mass. You do not build muscle mass from yoga. You do not build muscle mass from aerobic. You actually destroy muscle mass if you do long-distance running. Long-distance running, according to Doug McGuff, the exercise pioneer, is stupid. 
it is actually negative exercise. I'm sorry to be so blunt for those of you who are training for a marathon, but I would never do that. It actually hurts your body because your body will burn off type 2 muscle fiber. You need muscle. Long distance running is not exercise at all. What is exercise, and we'll come to that in a moment, is high intensity interval training and body weight training. We'll talk about how. Okay, 2.30 p.m., I do a mood check. Now, a mood check means I simply check in. How am I feeling? And this is a really important exercise. We need to nurture our bodies. We need to check in with ourselves. If we aren't checking in with ourselves, who else is going to do it for you? If you work from home and you have a partner who also works from home, this is a great time to just check in with each other. But I, I live by myself, and so I check in to myself. Now, there are four different types of moods that I observe I may feel after 2.30 p.m., right? What I'm going for here is what is called distress tolerance. I'm looking to, re to eradicate all stress. I want zero tolerance for stress because stress hurts your body. So to create higher distress tolerance, which means higher tolerance, higher tolerance for complexity before I feel stress, I check in and I'm looking to see which of these four moods do I need to experience right now. Now the first is Zen. Zen means relax. So if I need to relax because I'm finding that maybe I'm feeling a little bit too tense or I'm feeling a little bit anxiety, maybe I'm feeling just a tad bit of stress, I take an L-theanine pill. And as I said, L-theanine helps you relax. It's like 20 cups of green tea. It's wonderful. If I'm feeling a little bit like annoyed or I'm just feeling down, sad, and we all feel that, sadness is biochemistry. And so I take a combination of GABA and 5-HTP. GABA and 5-HTP are powerful things that actually shift your mood and make you more positive. I had a friend come to me once and said, listen, my life is such a mess. My mom just won't stop nagging me. My sister's an absolute bitch, and I'm feeling really depressed. And I said, hey, by the way, could I just give you some GABA and 5-HTP and take it for a week and tell me what you think? And she's like, oh my God, you're such a guy. You don't listen. I want you to listen about how annoying my mom is. <laughs> you're giving me pills. I'm like, just, just take these pills. Five days later, it's not even a week, she comes back to me. She's like, what the hell did you do to me? All of a sudden, I love my mom again. All of a sudden, I realized my sister isn't a bitch. She's just a, a mom with two kids. And I'm like, it's GABA and 5-HTP. It's biochemistry. So I cannot recommend this enough. GABA and 5-HTP change the way you show up in the world. They make you happy. They make you a nicer person. Sadness. Yes, we want to empathize with someone who's experiencing sadness, but also slip them a pill. Dreams. Magnesium. Very often, I just want to take a nap. And you let your body take a nap. If you feel tired, that's OK. A NASA study showed that a 22-minute nap Following that nap, your productivity goes up 30%. So if you have to take a 22-minute nap, don't feel guilty about it. In our office in Mind Valley, we actually have napping pods. We literally have pods for our employees to go and take a nap if they need to. And if you want to take a nap, you need to sleep. Magnesium is the ultimate supplement. Finally, flow. Let's say you don't want to sleep. You want to dive back into your work because you're excited about what's happening. Alpha-GPC is the number one. You can take tyrosine, you can take parazentine, but I like alpha-GPC. That gives me, if you have to take one pill, focus on alpha-GPC. Okay, so 2.30 p.m., it's a check-in. Now, 4.30 p.m., exercise. I exercise every single day. So the most important exercise is high-intensity interval training. High-intensity interval training, are you guys familiar with 10X on Mind Valley? That's an amazing exercise routine. I'm going to show you some results from 10X, but you only need to do high-intensity interval training for 30 minutes a week. That's it, 30 minutes a week. I do it for three hours a week because I enjoy it, and I go with friends, and we love working out in the gym. But you only need to do it for 30 minutes a week to have great shape and to also completely eradicate sarcopenia. And that's not just from our Mind Valley trainers. Dave Asprey, the founder of Biohacking, just made that declaration. But you've got to know which ones you're doing. Look at 10X or buy the book Body by Science. There are five exercises. It's called the Big Five for men or women. They give you the best results. Now, another way that really transforms your body is sprinting. Not long distance running, but sprinting. It only takes six minutes. If you live next to a park, here's how you do a sprinting exercise. You set a timer for 90 minutes, run as fast as you can. 
and then give yourself a one minute break. Then run as fast as you can for 60, sorry, not 90 minutes, 60, 90 seconds. Then run as fast as you can, one minute break, then run as fast as you can for 60 seconds, and then a um, one minute break, then run as fast as you can for 45 seconds. That's it, and you're done. Sprinting completely sheds body fat, okay? Running fast, but not long, not long distance running. Weight training is a form of high-intensity interval training. Weight training is amazing for both men and women. Women sometimes believe that it makes you bulky. No, this is the best exercise for women. And next, I want to show you an example, okay? Why is it the best exercise for women? This is an actual case study of Mary. She's a U.S. Army, um, she's in the U.S. Army, and what you're seeing is Mary's transformation in six months after doing 10x for 40 minutes a week. So we recommend 30 minutes a week is the base, base level. She wanted to go to the gym twice for 20 minutes each, so 40 minutes a week. So let me repeat. What you're seeing here is a transformation in six months for a woman going to the gym twice a week for 20 minutes each, okay? Doing just five exercises in the gym. Her weight went from 165 pounds to 124 pounds. Look at the body fat percentage. She dropped 20 percentage points in body fat. She gained five pounds of muscle, lost 40 pounds of fat. And she is in the US military. Even the military sometimes doesn't give you the best exercises. So this is how effective weight training or high-intensity interval training can be for a woman. Now, I go to the gym three times a week. On days when I'm not going to the gym, I started doing a 10 to 12-minute exercise uh, routine that I learned from a book called The Royal Marine Commando Exercise. So I love that book. Um, if, if you can't find the book, if it's out of print, you can get a similar routine on Mind Valley. It's called Total Transformation by Christine Bullock. You'll find it on Mind Valley. I find that this takes me 10 to 12 minutes, but I feel so good, it powers me up for the rest of the day, and it's completely transformed my body. So I spend, therefore, four hours a week exercising. So this is, let's say, 15 minutes, four times a week, that's an hour, and then three hours a week in the gym. So that's four hours a week. So that's what my exercise routine looks like. It's only four hours a week. It averages out to 35 minutes a day. Now, again, I'm a little intense, the bare minimum for any of you as an entrepreneur is 30 minutes a week. But you've got to be doing the right exercise, high-intensity interval training, okay? Now, one of the devices that I love, I recently got this, and it's transformed my exercise, is the Apple Watch. Apple has really done an amazing job making fitness accessible and making it gamified, so you really want to stay fit. If you invest in an Apple Watch, it's so motivating, it actually keeps you motivated to exercise. Now, 6 p.m., I go into learning time. Here's where I stop work and I focus on how can I become better as a leader, better as a founder, better as a CEO. So I may do a Mind Valley quest. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm doing a Mind Valley's AI program. Remember yesterday I spoke about two hours a week of non-negotiable learning time? So my two hours a week, I invested in learning AI. That's how I was able to build a supplement bot for you this morning. So learning AI has made me so much more effective as a CEO. So you could be learning real estate, you could be learning investing, you could be learning entrepreneurship, you could be learning speed reading, but two hours a week or 20 minutes a day. Now, nighttime. So now dinner is done and it's time to go to bed. One of the things that I'm practicing right now is less alcohol, more tea. So let's talk about alcohol for a moment. Alcohol consumption is declining at an accelerating, accelerating pace among men. It's not declining as fast among women, but it's really interesting. Today, in the Western world, among people in their 30s and 40s, men drink less alcohol than women. Women, what the hell is wrong with you? But I can tell you why. Studies came out showing that when you consume alcohol, even though it makes you more relaxed in the short term, it actually increases your baseline stress level. So you're getting more stressed out in the long term, and thus you need to take another glass of wine to chill the fuck down. The second study showed that alcohol actually reduces muscle protein synthesis by 25%, which means if you're going to a gym for 40 minutes, and then you take a glass of wine, you just eradicated 10 minutes of whatever workout you did. This is the, one of the number one reasons many men I know don't drink anymore, because they care about their, their six-pack. Third, alcohol will screw up your sleep. We think it helps you sleep. No, it helps you get tired. 
but it disrupts your sleep. You can test this if you have an aura ring. And fourth, this is the most interesting thing. Alcohol reduces your brain cognition. Alcohol is literally a mild form of poison that hurts your brain. It reduces your brain cognition so much so that a glass of wine will reduce your productivity by maybe 30 minutes the following day. Now, how much is an hour worth to you? Let's say an hour is worth $500 to you, which is not unreasonable for many of you. That glass of wine just cost you 250 bucks in productivity. Think about that. This is why I cut down alcohol pretty much completely, unless I'm at a really fine restaurant and the Malo is damn good. But even then, I'll have half a glass of wine. So alcohol is probably one of the most expensive habits you have because it's literally chipping away at your cognition, causing long-term decline of your, your, your brain cells and hurting you. Now, I realize that many people I know don't drink alcohol. Richard Branson doesn't touch alcohol. Naveen Jain doesn't test, uh, drink alcohol. But I was at their homes recently, and they have these massive bars. Why? To serve it to other people, because they are good hosts. And so what I started doing was, and I had the same thing, I took all my alcohol bottles, I shoved them in a cabinet, and I filled my shelves with loose-leaf teas. Now, when friends come over, I make teas for them, or I blend mushroom uh, elixirs like chaga mushrooms and lion's mane. And my friends love it, and they love coming over. They don't need a gin and tonic anymore. And by the way, I make amazing gin and tonics, but I don't make it for my friends anymore unless they really ask, they really plead for it. But I'll encourage them to taste a really amazing rooibos with just the right hint of like orange and mint. And you can do this too. So much of why we drink alcohol is just bullshit cultural programming. So let's try to change that. Now, saunas. Saunas are amazing. I live in Estonia. Every house has a sauna because it's so freaking cold that you want to kill yourself. So this is what saunas does. Now, when I saw these, this data, I was, I was um, blown away. A sauna four to seven times a week with n of 19 minutes of straight heat at 170F or 77C leads to a 40% reduction in all cases of mortality. 40% less diabetes, 40% less risk of heart disease, 40% less risk of cancer. If you're worried about your mortality, you want to build or invest in a sauna. And again, you may be thinking, 19 minutes straight heat, you know, take a freaking iPad in there and watch your favorite YouTube show. You, you don't have to bring the iPad in the sauna. Ideally, get a sauna with a glass window to keep the iPad outside. Or listen with AirPods and, and uh, um, uh, listen to an audio book. So you can keep that time productive, right? Most entrepreneurs I know just feel bored in a sauna. But that 19 minutes gives you all the benefits of exercise except muscle growth. So saunas are just absolutely amazing. Now at midnight, I go to bed. Now many of you have heard about this thing called the 5 a.m. club. How many of you have heard about it? How many of you do this and know that it works for you? How many of you tried it and thought it just didn't work for you? Okay, so the truth is this. According to Michael Bruce, who's the sleep doctor on Mind Valley and America's leading sleep doctor, there are different sleep chronotypes. 5 a.m. club only works for 30% of you. For the other 70%, it basically ruins your day. Don't do it, unless you know it works for you. In my case, I need to sleep late and I need seven and a half hours. I know this because I measure this on my aura ring. But the most important thing is I never skip sleep. Here's why, okay? Well, I'm gonna come, come to that. How do you get more sleep? Magnesium. At least three times a week, I take melatonin. I don't take it regularly because you don't want to get dependent on it, but melatonin is also a natural supplement. It really helps you go into deep sleep. After 9 p.m., I turn off bright lights, and I basically live in a house powered by candles and just like really dim lights. You don't eat two hours before bedtime, no caffeine past 12 p.m., and alcohol is bullshit. These six things will help you, will transform the way you sleep. Now, this is the study I wanted to share. The study was done on soldiers. Soldiers who got seven hours of sleep were 90% accurate on the shooting range. At six hours, they were only 50% accurate. At five, 35% accurate. At four hours, only 15% accurate. Now, you don't have to be a soldier. Soldiers are simply using their brain to make a decision, co coordinate with their body, and execute. We do the same thing as entrepreneurs. If you lose an hour of sleep because you're staying up for some crazy deadline, you basically 
reduce your thinking accuracy from 90% to 50%. Think about this the next time you skip on sleep. Sleep is essential to make money. Now, before going to sleep, one of the most beautiful routines you can do is a simple bedtime six-phase meditation. So I like to do this before going to bed. Ask yourself the following six questions. So the six phase again, phase one is compassion. So you ask yourself, to whom did I express love today? Love could be appreciation for an employee, could be a hug you gave a relative. Number two is for what am I grateful? What beautiful thing did I see in my life that I'm grateful for? Number three, what could I have done better? This correlates with forgiveness. Did I make a mistake today that maybe I want to avoid in the future? Number four, what new visions do I have for my life? What did I see in the world today that inspires me to think about my future in a different way? What is my top priority for tomorrow? Think about the number one thing you want to execute tomorrow. And then number six, say a prayer for strength, safety, and sleep to whatever um, religion, whatever higher power you believe in. Really helps you sleep well and sets you up for an amazing morning. Now, I, I believe in biohacking sleep. I sleep on a Semina bed, which is a, a great bed. It, it's around 12,000 pounds, uh, but it's a grounded bed. If you can afford it, you might want to look into it. I also use a Happy device and I use an aura ring. Happy emits a frequency that tricks your brain into believing it's taken melatonin and magnesium and helps you sleep. And an aura ring helps you track your sleep. So these are biohacking devices, not essential, but maybe things you want to look at. Now let's look at the timeline for this. So as I said, it's 90 minutes. Meditation takes 20 minutes. Supplements, preparing your stack, five minutes. Meal preparation, okay? Literally, it takes me five minutes to make my four egg omelet. Exercise, 35 minutes. Learning time, 20 minutes. And sleep. I'm not sleeping for five minutes. I'm spending five minutes taking my sleep supplements and then doing my six phase to help me go to bed spiritually aligned. All of this is 90 minutes. This 90 minutes adds a decade to your life, but every single day you're doing this, you feel better about yourself. Your emotions are different. Your cognition is different. Your focus is different. And you are less likely to fall sick, get ill, or, or see your health break down. So remember, health magnifies wealth. We all need to be healthy, resilient, powerful entrepreneurs. Never, ever, ever sacrifice your health for money. That QR code will help you download the slides so you can follow. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you.